This is Gail Morgan thanking you for watching the Libertarian Counterpoint each Thursday at 8 p.m. Channel 17 on Comcast, on YouTube, and on Facebook. Welcome to Libertarian Counterpoint. I'm the director, and tonight we have host James Just with us. Welcome to Libertarian Counterpoint on Channel 17, on Comcast, YouTube, and other places. Well, thank you, Gail. It's a strange place for us to be coming here with us today. You know, it's, a, it's kind of an interesting time, shall we say, in the world, and we all are kind of having to adjust. Um, we're sort of practicing distancing here, but not really. Well, we're media. We actually exempt. We get to. This is true. We, we get to be we're news and we're media. We get to be exempt from the social distancing. Not and, that we don't. and as an electrician, I'm exempt also. Wow. See, I'm a delivery guy. I'm exempt as well. I get to deliver for Amazon. And, yeah. And, and, and as as the IT guy for my office, I'm exempt because I have to make the online conferences work. So. Here we are, a couple of people that just get to act normal in <laughs> all the chaos. And but we welcome you wherever your situation. We welcome you to the Recurring Counterpoint Point tonight. Yeah, it's it's a strange world we live in these days. It's it's I've watched on the news, I saw um, in back east, Rhode Island is actually tracking down New York residents and to send them back. It's just don't invade our coronavirus. Yeah, don't evade our coronavirus-free state. Your state isn't coronavirus-free. But when have we decided that restricting the free movement of people is actually acceptable? From a libertarian viewpoint, that's never acceptable. And I think, was it South Korea, did a very good job of just telling everybody, mind your own health, safety, welfare, and they did not crack down on them, and they did an excellent job of uh, the typical Korean greeting is hello, no handshake, just the nod, uh, and that's very good social distancing. I was watching today a doctor from New York practicing in the New York hospitals saying, I don't know what everybody's afraid of. Wash your hands, touch something, wash your hands, go somewhere, wash your hands. If you're working with somebody who has the COVID-19 virus, if you're gonna be there any length of time, if, if it's an enclosed area, put on a face mask. It does not need to be a medical, uh, what do they call the N95? N95. Doesn't have to be that, it could be a handkerchief strapped around uh, just so you don't breathe in particles. It's not airborne, he said, it is, it is droplet. And that's an important distinction to make um, because the droplets are what you pick up with your hand or your sleeve when you touch something or when you shake hands. And then you can take that from your hand and touch your face, your nose, lick your finger, turn the page, uh, any of that sort of thing, uh, that's where the contact comes from. You don't want to take those molecules and transfer them from uh, the surface to you. So uh, any type of hand sanitizer, excellent uh, tool to keep you safe. And then we can meet like this, as long as I don't sneeze on you, and you don't cough on me, or anything like that, we're guaranteed to be safe. If we touch one another, then we should wash before we... Yeah, we can sit here, sit here just, you know, fairly close to each other, but doesn't mean we're actually transferring anything dangerous, even if one of us happened to have been upset, which there's no reason to believe, actually, either one of us is at the moment. I, I'm gonna be just lighthearted about this for a second. I survived the Y2K fear yeah. of the ending of the world. I survived SARS without getting it. I survived MERS without getting it. I survived the H1N1 without getting it. So far, I've survived COVID-19 without getting it. And I really don't expect to get it. And I probably should be better at washing my hands than I am. But, uh, 
This afternoon I probably washed my hands four times and used hand sanitizer in the process. 79 degrees, uh, you, for 20 seconds you're going to kill, you're going to melt the, the, the shell of the, the virus. Fatty off, the fatty offices yeah. and the, the virus itself is actually fairly fragile once you get it. Oh it is, yeah. very fragile. Yeah. And the shell can be melted off or you can use a degreaser and destroy that shell. Once the shell's gone, the, the whole thing sort of collapses. Yeah. Um, alcohol, I forget the percentage. You know, it's 55%, I believe. 55% on alcohol. 55%. So if you're using something above 55%. Vodka won't work. No. It's not strong enough. Not strong enough. Rum won't work. No, you need 151 or something. Something insane that you haven't drank since you were 17. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or, or anything, drinking a little bit, of anything, washing anything in your throat, down into your stomach, it will destroy it in the acid in your stomach, as long as you get it to your stomach instead of breathing it down your air tube. Yeah, I heard about that, though. Getting it into your stomach is, is taking it into your mouth isn't as much of a problem if you drink a oh, lot, no. because it gets into your stomach. But into getting it through your nose or into your eyes, because this is my problem, I do this all the time, and because you don't have the dust, and so I'm always doing this. And <laughs> Hand sanitizer, hand sanitizer, hand sanitizer. Yeah, and then you get hand sanitizer and stick it in your eyes, and that's painful. No, 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 no. <laughs> you know, one drop, <laughs> put it in your hands, a few seconds there, maybe about 20 of them, and then uh, you're good to go. Yeah, but it's interesting what we do. I got delivered a, a webcam off to, it, to somebody to because they needed a webcam for the business to keep going. And so I've got a spare one up on the shelf, so it's just an old webcam. We cleaned it off with you know, some cleaner, and then I went and sanitized my hands, put it in a bag, and stuck the bag in the back of the car, drove it to them, sanitized my hands again, picked up the bag, took it, dropped, dropped it off and threw it outside their door, and then left. And I'm sure that when they picked up the bag, they sanitized the thing and took it out and sanitized themselves. And so, you know, we're all probably much cleaner now than we were just a couple months ago, which is probably a good thing if we build in some, some extra sanitary habits. And, and, and that, looking at it again from a libertarian viewpoint, not infringing on somebody else means not giving them something you might have. And it comes back to the old principle of personal responsibility. If you have something or you've been exposed to somebody that has something, take the measures not to convey that to somebody else. Yeah, and there's, there's also a limitation. Um, everything on the planet gets a disease, everything on the planet gets sick, trees, grass, bees, and so there's, there is a limit to how much you can actually be expected to not get other people sick. And so it's, if it's obvious, you don't deliberately get anybody sick. That's a clear, uh, not a aggression, active aggression. It's a clear right. violation of an aggression principle. But if you're just going about your business and you accidentally get people sick, well, that, so be it. that kind of happens. That's yeah. kind of part of living. I mean, you can't kind of expect to live in a society and not have that happen. And so, so this, the person who was spitting on the groceries that got arrested the other day, yeah, clearly they should be arrested for speeding on the groceries, whether they, they have whether they have coronavirus or not. Thirty thousand dollars worth of food destroyed through the action of one person. Well, I shouldn't say that much of food. The cost of throwing out all the food and cleaning up and restocking everything involved was thirty thousand dollars. So you have a lot of payroll involved cleaning the freezers and resetting it. It's just so insane that, that, that that should be a viol that's a clear violation oh, in yeah. normal times. And so these kind of things is for the kids. It's like the people that licked ice cream. Yeah, that's a clear <laughs> violation. You know, some of those people didn't go to jail. I'm going, okay, maybe sending them to jail is the wrong thing, but they should be doing some community service time. You know, I think that's kind of a, one of those things. There that, should be a penalty to pay commensurate with the damage you've done. Yeah, because I don't, I don't like locking people it should, be, it should be kind of the last resort. So if you're kind of doing these low-grade things, you should be having low-grade punishments. And a lot of times, just having to go through the process of figuring out what your punishment is for someone who's not a natural criminal is, is enough to say, okay, I've got to change my behavior. It's actually the punishment is, is kind of irrelevant at the point where it's, it's the whole process of getting a lawyer, going to court, and all this kind of having to go through all that things. Yeah. Oh, forget it. I'm going, to, I'm going to mind my P's and Q's just because. I, I watched another video. Somebody sent me, and I put it on, on Facebook, and I put it on the, the uh, nonprofit that I, I'm on the board of directors for. I put it on their website. Uh, the video is by a doctor who says you can 
absolutely sanitize everything. He put a piece of tape across the counter. This is the clean side, this is the contaminated side. You bring your groceries in, you sit there, you wipe outside, outside of every container. You throw away the box and put the cereal in the, the plastic bag. What it is, it's not really plastic, but it's plastic. You set, that's clean, so you set that on that side. Uh, you wipe down the outside of everything, you set it on that side. Then you can put it in the refrigerator, the freezer, or wherever else. And then you clean up and wipe up, sanitize the counter where everything is contaminated. And you're good to go. A lot of work. But you can absolutely guarantee you're not going to pick up any type of germ from anything with that process. So if, if uh, like my roommate is a germaphobe. Uh, he, he hates the way I do some things. He tells me that. Um, I think I'm good enough to keep the Conrad uh, virus thing away. But um, he's good enough he could come in and take care of somebody after surgery. Yeah. <laughs> so, there are some benefits sometimes to being like that. You yes. know, some people who are OCD, if, if, if you can kind of get them into the right areas and say, okay, well, let's have you, if you're a germaphobe, let's have you work in a sterile environment that needs to be sterile. Let's get you into a sterile room. It doesn't have to be a surgery room. It can be a manufacturing sterile room. Okay. Let's, let's have them use that obsessive compulsion to, to and, benefit. And there's a time of repairing airplanes. Yeah. There's, so there's a time and place to be OC. By the way, you know what CDO is? No, I don't. That's like OCD, but it's in alphabetical order, like it should be. <laughs> so that kind of describes uh, some people I know. But yeah, common sense, keeping your social distance. And this is something maybe, especially New Yorkers and Sacramento and LA, uh, any crowded populace should maintain a certain amount of separation all the time to prevent the transmission of any type of disease, not just the coronavirus, um, but any type of flu, cold and flu season every year, those are, those are good measures to take. Just, you know, hand sanitize, keep your distance. Yeah, but how realistic is that in some of these places like New York where it's so tightly populated and so much of their transportation is, is mass transit? I was looking at the map the other day and I was looking at where the hotspots are and I'm going, you know, all of those are heavily mass transit uh, required cities where you almost have to take man transit to get around. So, you know, you're kind of wondering, you're putting all these people into a, essentially an aluminum box with a couple other hundred people and set them down there for 20 minutes. So I use mass transit all the time. Yeah. I have a, a physical disability. I'm confined to a chair most of the time. Uh, so getting from point A to point B, I have several choices. One is to solicit a expensive courier who probably doesn't clean his vehicle as much as, as he should that will charge me a substantial amount of money to transport a wheelchair from one location to another. Um, most of those services I need to let them know a day or two in advance. I cannot be spontaneous or I can go out and use the public bus system uh, which I do, and I have a, uh, a monthly pass that I buy because it's, it's, I use it that much. Yeah. Uh, but, or I could use paratransit service. I don't. I'm qualified. But um, it just makes sense for me in my situation. I'm not going to say this works for everybody. But those buses are 45 feet long. Sometimes they're standing room only. But even when it's like that, if I wash my hands with hand sanitizer, everything I come in contact with on that vehicle is 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 taken care of. That that I don't touch anything in there with any part of my body except my hands. And the people riding the bus, they sit in the chair or they stand there. They might hold onto the rail. They might grab the strap from the, from above to hang onto that one. But seriously, you can, with a one foot separation, uh, maybe six inches separation, safely, cleanly, 
use mass transit in this city. And you probably want to put on a mask to go into a bus or a thing. You know, if, if you're just coughing, if you're, you, you may, I mean, if you want to do that. But we would, before everybody knew, people were passing this thing around these mass transit. You're looking at Wuhan and New York and, and in Italy where there's all these uh, the high concentration of cases are. It's, you're looking at mass transit, you're going, there's well, likely a carrier case in there. Now in Sacramento, I saw that they were doing very, some stuff very good. They're actually now wiping down all the buses and sanitizing all the buses every night. And I saw someplace, and I don't remember where it is, where they actually send all the buses through a UV cleaning, hmm. sanitization. All the buses and all the No, no, it's, it's insanely expensive. It may have been New Jersey, New York. It wasn't New York, but it was something. They were sending them, LA, I think it was LA. They sent them through the UV, the UV tunnel, and they so by the time you come out, they're kind of all nice and sanitized. But you can't send a human to that UV thing because it'll kill you. And, and so it's... Well, you can handle a certain amount. Yeah, but the kind that actually, I, was, I read the thing. Keep your eyes closed. <laughs> the kind that they were used, you have to turn it up so high that you can't, you can't yeah. actually take it. But, but for sanitizing stuff, you know, things that can take it, man, send it through all that stuff. I, I know we had Lee on the, on the program a couple weeks ago, and he was talking about how we should uh, UV ray the, what, on the airplanes, the, the luggage, air, and, yeah. luggage and all that kind of thing. The air recirculation system. And the air yeah. Recirculation, yeah. And so those are the questions that you know maybe we should actually start looking forward to as we go uh, go forward. So remember Michael Jackson? Yeah. With his white gloves mm -hmm. and his mask. Yeah, everybody's gonna look like Michael Jackson. Yeah, everybody's trying to start something now. Yeah, you start something. Well, also we're gonna get to have some fashion. Right? Everybody's gonna be wearing yes. gloves, so we're gonna get some fashion gloves. We're gonna have fashion night coming back. Gloves and fashion night coming back. My grandfather's day, men wore hat, gloves, and might even use a walking stick, and they kept that social distance because you didn't want to get hit by somebody's stick. But we may be going back in style, back to what was a couple of generations ago, and it was not, not all that bad. No, but the reason they had their gloves because their life was dirty back then, and so you wore gloves so you know you could keep your hands clean. I mean, we're kind of getting back, yeah, we're getting back to how we know we need to, we need to keep our hands clean, so we wear some gloves. Or, you know, you know, it's just strange. It's just a strange world we are living in these days. Yeah. As everybody is trying to struggle, as we, you know, just trying to trouble putting together this this TV show was a struggle this week. <laughs> yeah. Currently, we uh, cannot get into the TV studio because it is locked down for fear of the the virus. And the order came from the Sacramento County Health Department to all government agencies and their subsidiaries and subscribers. Thou shalt not continue unless you are essential. And uh, broadcasting is essential, but the TV studio is not. Uh, I'm not going to try to figure that one out. Yeah, well, but well you can't. Government always runs into the law of unintended consequences. And speaking of the law of unintended consequences, there were, in Howard County, they were telling Walmarts not to sell books, furniture, and all these other things because the stores who had to close that sell that stuff is not fair to them. And so now you can't sell any non-essential items because it's not fair. So what are the people going to do? They're going to go home and buy it from Walmart or Amazon anyway. So you're online. Not, yeah, online. And so you're not actually doing anything but making it the delivery people have to work harder. It, They're thankful. They got a job. Well, yeah, but we have enough to deliver. We have enough toilet paper and baby wipes and diapers and cat food and dog food. I swear that's all we're delivering these days is dog food you and can't, cat food and baby wipes. You can't get towels and toilet paper at the grocery store anymore. I mean, as soon as they open up, the hoarders rush in and grab it, and an hour later, the stores are out. And they don't get another shipment in for until the next day, usually, or as in the case of CVS next door to where we're at right now, they get a shipment once a week, and that truck arrives sometime on Thursday. And if I want toilet paper, I have to be there Thursday night or Friday morning, or is isn't going to happen. But if I go on Amazon, and I spend twice as much as I should for toilet paper, I can get some. This is, well, I was nice. I was at uh, Smart and Final today, so this may start to ease up, and people were buying toilet paper, and it was like two and a half. So, no, it wasn't quite true. It was like 12, 1 o'clock. So when did they receive the shipment? Uh, I just had to go there. I have no idea, but, but there was no, there's no major, maybe that's kind of, everybody who's kind of bought toilet paper kind of 
bought it. I know my daughter, last week, we had, we still had a package of toilet paper, but the, she works at Home Depot. And when they got their pallet of toilet paper in, they said, we're gonna hold back one pallet for all the associates, so everybody can get one, all the associates can buy one, one pack of toilet paper. So she bought one and brought it home. We still haven't cracked it open. But, you know, we're about to get there. But, you know, we're not hoarding or anything. We have an extra pack of toilet paper for a house with six people in it. You know, sure. so it's not, it's, I usually buy, like, the 18-pack yeah, for, for two people. Because um, that's, you know, it lasts for a while, but it's convenient. There's a spot in my shelf for it, so I fill that up. And when it's depleted, I'm down to one roll or part of a roll, I go and get a new one. Well, the other day we were down to one roll. I told Alan he needs to go find uh, some more <laughs> toilet paper. Some Walmart and Winco were out, safe we had some. So three stops, and, and, and he brought some home. But the I stopped, what was it, uh, a week ago, Thursday. So it will be two weeks prior to when this airs. I stopped at Walmart on Watt Avenue, and I was shocked just how many empty shelves there were. And just for a little background, I worked with the Romanian immigrants in 1987 to 1995 in that range quite a bit. And in the process, I heard many of the stories from the communist countries about, you go 6 a.m., get in line for when the doors opened, and you hoped you were early enough in the line that if they got something, you could get it. Yeah. And I, there was one family that three days after they arrived in the U.S., I took them in my van down to uh, that's uh, something else there now, but it was a Rayleigh's on Watt Avenue by Elkhorn. And uh, took them in there. They ran all over the place just touching food and stuff. Just bread. It was really, there was bread in that bag. There was looking at jars of stuff. Not so much buying anything, but just looking at unbelieving. And then we told them, what do you want? Get what you want. And then they, they gradually built up a quarter of the grocery cart, and then they thought, well, they didn't want to take too much. Um, and that was for uh, two children, a man and his wife, and his mom and dad. And that's all they could comprehend taking. And it was just amazing to watch this. And all this, Thursday, two weeks ago when this airs, um, just hit me like a ton of bricks, sitting there watching the aisle after aisles going by looking, nothing. There'd be one stack of something, nobody, uh, chili flavored ramen noodles. <laughs> yeah, you can All tell, the other were gone. You can tell what people don't like. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, one, one, you know, the whole row, the whole aisle, both sides was empty, but down one end there'd be one stack of stuff that was not even touched. Nobody wanted it. But the, the deli meats, the prepackaged uh, bacon, hot dogs, well, that whole area there, nothing. The cheeses, nothing. It was just, um, it was amazing. It just, I have never seen that anywhere, let alone at a big Walmart. Yeah, well, I see it down at my local grocery store that just closed. It, it stopped ordering some stuff, and so, it, you know, everything was kind of half empty for anyway, so you're going, yeah, the store looks half empty, and then the coronavirus thing it hits, and the store's all empty. And you, you do wonder. I used to work with a, a man who was an immigrant from Ukraine. He actually got kicked out of the Soviet Union because he wouldn't shut up. <laughs> I'm so, how the hell did you not get stuck into the gulag? But, and so he said the first time he went to a grocery store, he said he spiked something for bread and toilet paper, I think. And he said he had to go home. He couldn't figure out what the hell to buy. And so there was so much choice. He was so overwhelmed with choice, he couldn't figure out what to buy, which what are you supposed to buy? Because they're not used to choice. Yeah, there was one. Yeah, you buy it. If they had it. If they had it. And oddly enough, he said, like, the newspaper was a better toilet paper than the toilet paper was. You didn't buy toilet paper was for fire starting, was for starting fires. It wasn't for using for toilet paper. You bought Pravda for the toilet paper. It's, <laughs> it's you used the toilet paper for starting fires, but you still had to start fires because that's how you kept warm. And so it's this, this whole kind of dichotomy that, you know, we're kind of, it, looks like we're going there, but we all know we're not. We're all kind of it's, get caught up in the fear and the fear mongering, and it's so easy to do. 
So we've only got a couple minutes left, and I did want to cover, I did want to talk about uh, the new edict issued by Gavin Newsom. I haven't heard much of that. Two. One of them, uh, all the nurses and doctors and, and healthcare professionals have, the regulations have been loosened up on them. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're retired up to five years, you can come back without having to reapply. Uh, if you're if you've graduated but you haven't done your your rotation, you can go right in and uh, get paid. Yes, um, and I heard about that. I actually, did hear about that. I okay, did. and they're going to convert. It looks like they're going to convert the old sleep train arena into a 350 bed hospital that will be divided. Half of it will be coronavirus. Half of it will be other medical issues. So we'll have one more hospital in Sacramento to handle the load, but. Uh, same thing happened to the uh, arena or convention center in Los Angeles, and they're doing some other uh, locations like that. So he's issued that, and he also extended the don't go out and socialize until the end of April. Yes. So I know Trump did that, so, so Newsom wouldn't follow through. Yeah. The same thing. Now, I know these things are... Trump's is a suggestion. Yes, nuisance is a suggestion. It's a strongly worded suggestion, but it is a suggestion. And there's teeth behind it. No, they, yeah, but there's not as many as what people think. It's actually not the order that people think it is. Now, yeah. counties can actually use that as in order to, to go. Sacramento forward. County does have some teeth carrying regulations, but they're not going to use them until they want to. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's got, which is, you know, it's a strange. It's how our basic human rights, our basic human constitutional rights, if they don't exist in a crisis, then why do they exist at all? Yeah. So people can watch the Libertarian Counterpoint every Thursday, 8 p.m. on Channel 17, on YouTube and Facebook. And this is Gail Morgan thanking you for watching the Libertarian Counterpoint each Thursday at 8 p.m. Channel 17 on Comcast on YouTube and on Facebook. We invite you to come again next week for the Libertarian Counterpoint.